Hello, everyone. Um, a little bit crazy. We uh, already recorded this episode, but this dumbass messed up the audio, so I couldn't hey, hear I me. Mess up any audio. Dude. Um, I completely you can, messed me up. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear me beautifully now. But he, okay, his computer messed up. But this is um the long-awaited episode that we had planned for like almost like nearly like a year now. The Terrifier Three Some review. Something. There it is. Um. Uh, so yeah, we're here for that, of course. Um, let's get right into it. So I guess we could start off with our regular like shen- shenanigans. Um, <clears throat> we always start with sports. Yeah, yeah. So um, we know Real Madrid won the Super Cup. Uh, Mbappe scored a goal. That was a while ago. We hadn't made an episode since I. Uh, uh, no, we have made an episode. Since- no, that was in um that was in August. We hadn't made episodes like July. in that time, July. So, um, Mbappe scored in the Super Cup, so that's cool. Uh, Spain. We already said we already talked about Spain winning the Euros. Um, what else is there? Um, we already talked about Celtics winning the championship. Um, it's really not that much to be honest. Uh, I guess Real Madrid's doing good. I have the I have an Mbappe kit on right now actually, um, because I decided to get one because it's his first season at Real Madrid, so I just had to get one. Uh, you take a working with the new camera angle here; it looks fantastic. I know, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it for sports. To be honest, I I can't really think of anything else to to talk about. But uh, I guess we could start with like uh, uh, technology. Uh, I guess we go technology. Uh, Otani beat, um, Otani, uh, did got the fifty for fifty record. I guess we can talk about tech. So we had the um Tesla event. We had the um the Optimus robot and the Cybervan and the Cybercab. Uh, if I was really excited for one, it would be the Cybercab because I actually really like the Cybercab. Um. Uh, uh, we had the ILL. Cybercab is it's completely wheelless. That's the Cybervan. They're both completely wheelless. Oh, okay. Um, we had the launch of the iPhone 16 Pro. Super, like, just so mid. Just get a 15 Pro. Get a 15 Pro Max, honestly. Honestly, actually, from what I've heard, the 15 and the 16s are actually worth it. It's one. There's like one difference. You can still run Apple AI on the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. Um, you can on the regular 16. So I guess if you have like an iPhone 14 or iPhone 13, um, last year it was, if you had an iPhone 12, then you upgrade to the 15. But if you have like a 13, then I would get, I would get a 16. Okay. Uh, more on tech, I guess we have the launch of the Ryzen 9000 CPUs and the X870 motherboards, uh, as well as Intel's launching their new 15th gen Arrow Lake CPUs, um, as well as new graphics card generations for NVIDIA and AMD, uh, the 8000 and 5000 series, respectively. Yeah, um, I don't want to uh, sit on this too long, but I think we do need to mention the absurd price of PS5 Pros. Oh, yep. PS5 Pro. So they launched the. Uh, I want to hold a 30 minute yeah. conversation on this. The um, yeah. the uh, scalpers for the 30th anniversary PS5s are like two thousand dollars, six thousand dollars if I you've seen them. The controller because some companies are releasing that are only doing limited pre-orders. So I'm gonna try to get on right away and order one. Yeah, I would. It's gonna be difficult, but the source dry. Um. What else do we have here? I guess we had the launch of the Quadcast 2, uh, if we didn't already say I could talk about that. Uh, we, yeah, we haven't done that. Uh, we can do... I think we should still do a mini-movie section. I mean, even though we're talking about a movie, there's still ones we're not talking about that have come out. Uh, the new Beetlejuice movie came out. Um, long-awaited. Deadpool and Wolverine came out. We didn't talk about that. That was in August. Yeah, we did. We did talk about that. You bought No, but like... We- we no, remember we said we would also do a review on it once oh, you had watched the movie, so we can we could pack that in here. I'm sure. Uh, maybe hold up. Maybe kick off. Well, we could either do it this way. This is another thing to talk about. We could um either do 
three, uh, two more episodes after this. I'm doing Deadpool and Wolverine and then the finale, or we can do it at the start of the next season. I say we just chuck it in this episode. It could be a very short, like, 10-minute review. I think we could easily knock everything out. I would like to do a full review. Okay, we can do it in the next episode, I guess. Uh, I'm sure everyone who's already seen it has, or already wanted to see it has probably seen it because it's been out for, like, three months now, so, but who cares? Movie-wise, yeah. So, Beetlejuice, is, uh, Beetlejuice was actually an interesting movie. I don't know if you've gone to see it, but I have. Um, it was a very, like, loose sequel. Like, it had the characters, it had everything, but it didn't really have that many story connections, but that also might be because of the age gap in between when that happened and now. Yeah. So it just might not have felt like the story was the same. Yeah. That makes so sense, honestly. Um, smile um, Joker movie, whatever, um, whatever, however you say it. It was pretty trash, I hear. Uh, it's pretty trash, honestly. Yeah, that that's how you say it. Well, it's with a D because it's French. I don't. I like. I love uh, Joaquin, but um, I'm not a huge fan of Lady Gaga at all. Eh, it's just like maybe a few songs, but anything else, yeah, I I, I agree with that. No, I agree. She's not. I mean, she's a good artist, but like. You know, all right. Anyway, moving on, I guess we could talk about music. Um, Kanye dropped out Vultures 2 and it was absolute trash. Um, I think, yeah, I don't like any of the songs off of any uh, of the sure Vultures albums, have, to be honest. Uh, this past, uh, this was announced, but I don't think we talked about it. Uh, the big new festival in uh, Ocean City, Maryland, um, Country Calling, which is now supposed to be the yearly event. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Travis Scott announced he's dropping an album either this year or next year, which is great. That I'm is very excited for that. Up in jail again. He's yeah. If he doesn't get up for a DUI again, <laughs> this guy's got so many DUIs. It's crazy. Um, I guess we have the new Jurassic World movie coming out next year in the summer. Hopefully, it's not trash. Fingers crossed. Uh-huh. Um. Oh, uh, we could. So I can't. If, I can't really say much about it yet, but uh, I'm working on something. Tune into my uh, announcement show at the on November the thirteenth, hour three. I can't announce them exactly what yet, but I am working on something. So tune into that event. We also have um the uh what's it called. Um, China, the we're on international break right now, but the Champions League should be coming back. But we have El Clasico next weekend. Is that right? Next weekend we have El Clasico. It's on twenty six or seventh. So that might be two weeks. It's twenty sixth. Um, what's today? It's the it's the fifteenth. It's about eleven days a week. It eleven days away, which is yeah. It's actually it would be. Uh, it's next Saturday, I believe, or next Sunday. It's one of the two. Um, but that's great because that's exciting always. Oh. And Barcelona have to play Bayern Munich in the same week. Oh, my God, am I excited for that. That's going to be an absolute circus of a game. Um, not exactly uh, 100% sure if we're going to uh, do it yet, but we might be doing a uh, card breaks on this channel too. And yes, I'm very interested in getting into the uh, football side of top cards. So uh, card, I just hold up. Car break is, might be a little extreme because breaks means you're spending a lot of money, which we do. Like yeah, money. like like thousand euros per like opening. So I don't know. So I don't know. Card you know. Opening. <laughs> yes, opening. There you go. Um, but yeah, that'll be exciting. Uh, if we get to do that. So, do you want to move on to the review? I'd say oh, I can't think of yeah, anything let's, else. Let's do what we tried to do last time. Um, so, let's do a brief little, um, brief little recap of the first two, and then a spoiler-free oh, yeah. review, like a Rotten Tomatoes-style review, then the actual review. 
do you want me to go through do you want me to do the recap and you can do your Rotten tomatoes too okay so in the first movie we have uh victoria hughes and she is like all our friends are killed by art um nothing really like memorable or like story driven about this uh no she had two tara and the other girl the blonde one wasn't that the one that was holding the baby the whole time no that was the cat lady yeah so so anyway um and then vicky tries to fight art and uh he she gets her eight her face eaten off and then art kills himself and he at the end of the movie it showed that he's actually alive um and we find out in the second movie that it's because he was possessed by a like a demon uh which is like the pale i the pale girl um in the second movie and he comes back to life and he kills the guy in the morgue and he goes and and the pale girl shows up a bunch of times in the movie but um we're of course of uh introduced to sienna and uh jonathan who are very important What's it, in the second movie this is, uh, uh, we tried to have this conversation earlier i actually just did my research on this so art in the first movie is a human but he comes back as yeah. a reincarnated demon basically yeah, so like the demon. Well, what was is the, the demon? Uh, oh wait, this is part of Terrifier three. We can't say that yet. No, no, That's no, in Terrifier no, no. three. He came. He comes back. At, he comes back in Terrifier two as a demon. Like he is. Well, no, no. He no, no. Like he's like the, it's possessed in his body. I did is my the demon. research on what Leon has stated, and Leon just did another interview stating the same thing on a podcast. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll explain more of that later in Terrifier three review. So, um, he. He, you know, kills all of her friends and she's she's traumatized by him. She takes the magic sword and he cuts his uh head off. And uh, you know, he's you know, dead. Of course he's not dead because Leon had confirmed Terrifier 3 right after two had come out, so we knew he wasn't dead. Uh it only took two years. But um, yeah, so that's that's Terrifier uh Terrifier 2. We'll do this because I had my a rotten tomatoes one that's not spoiler for a rotten tomatoes review. I give it a four and uh, four and a half out of five stars. Um, it's a great movie. Uh, Thornton kills it again as Art the Clown. Um, Lauren Levera, I mean, it was great acting. What I could say is, is she really knows how to put in emotion. Is what I gotta really say. Didn't see her oh, like. As she was pretty character. she was pretty present in that movie yeah but it was kind of, it was very minimal voice lines she talked plenty she was kind of like how Lori how Lori Strode was in uh Halloween 2018 to be honest that's all that's that's my best comparison for you um, she's like really paranoid great if you are, can handle blood and gore uh, probably the best if you can hand yeah I gotta say it is disgusting all right um well, uh, four people oh we got to mention this four people walked out of our theater throughout the whole movies one time oh my god that's crazy i've never been in a movie like that uh, spoiler free zone is over if you haven't seen it and give you five movie, seconds i don't care we'll give you five seconds also another warning is a uh, disturbing warning yeah. yeah pretty disturbing okay five four three two one all right, all right. Well, well, all right might as well start off the movie. Assuming that you're gone, um, let's have the, uh, all right, so. Uh, do you want me to kick off the plot? You can if you want. I, I okay, so um, we start off with, um, shit, how does it start off again? Shit, you can do it. I forgot already. Shit. I forgot the first part of the movie. I forget the opening scene. I oh okay you just had to say opening scene and that made me remember so we start off with this family uh and it's it's a little girl a little boy uh you can take over the after the next and the next scene we'll go scene by scene we'll switch so it's this little girl and the, uh a little boy probably like 10 years old the little girl's like six years old verbally communicate each scene together or not yeah so one after another okay all right that's fine uh, we got the like the little boy. What would you say? He's like ten years old, I would say and the little girl's like five or six. Okay. Um, and then there's a mom 
and she and the little girl's like, I hear reindeer on the roof, or like I hear Santa on the roof. And the little the um mom is like, it's an elf. Uh he's like scouting out because this is like supposed to be like a few days before Christmas Eve. Then, but like she gets her back to bed, and then it's um like a couple hours later she hears it again, so she thinks it's actually Santa this time. Um and goes downstairs this time instead of going and waking up. Well, no, she goes and tries to wake up her brother. And then she... Yeah, she goes to try to wake up her brother. Yeah. Uh, and then she sees what she thinks is Santa initially. You know, until you see uh, Mr. Art the Clown grab out the axe from his... Uh, yeah. Yeah, boy. He then proceeds to walk upstairs completely. Well, we know he probably knew the girl was there. He just left her alone. Ah, so do, uh, do you want me to explain this part? No, nah, I would like to explain the scene. Goes okay. Upstairs into the little boy's room. Let me let me clear this. This might be the most unrealistic sound I've ever or have ever heard out of a horror movie because when he axed him it would not be that loud from outside the i mean he was axing him on the bed though that would make it less noise why not but like what about like what if the bed's like super creaky or super loud yeah, but you're hearing the like axe actually hit him and stuff yeah you'd be able to hear that if it's if he's hitting him like really hard yeah, but dude he's loud. chopping up a child Limb by limb, including his head. Art the Clown shows no remorse to anyone. Absolutely none. Oh my god. Okay. Art the Claws is coming to town. And then he proceeds to walk out of the room, glance over his shoulder like this. He sees the little girl. He walks to her parents' room. And this is like, we don't see the little boy get chopped up, but we know he did, you know, because we see him later. But um, anyway... That uh, he goes into the parents' room and he kills them. Uh, we see it. He the guy pretty much gets mutilated, to be honest, um, and it's pretty disgusting. So yeah. Hold on a second. All right, I'll explain this while he goes and does what he's doing. Um, and then he. Goes to well, then the wife wakes up and looks over and sees the ending of this happening, and then um, she proceeds to try to start running through the house. She goes and tries to get her son, but her this is where we see the remains. Of it's pretty son. nasty. It's pretty nasty. It's probably like. The closest I, I've in other movies we see like limbs and parts of children, but I've never seen it that gruesome. A child in pieces in a movie in the movie theater. That's crazy. I've never seen that. Like truly, truly never. Truly. It's crazy. Well, honestly, I don't see it as like I it's worse than seeing a parent get, but it like in all honesty, it's bound to happen. It, it, there's really no rules against it. Yeah, that's true. There really isn't, to be honest. Now, you might get it's... more by certain people, but yeah. there's really no rules stating that you can't. It's just definitely not very common. Well, because most directors... Most directors don't really want to um, show stuff like that, but Leon has proved time and time again he will go one step further than anybody thinks he will. Absolutely. This guy is absolutely insane. And can you, you know, believe that he did all the practical effects himself? He built them in his basement or his garage. It was one of the really two. Weird. The first and second movie. Crazy. I'm pretty sure he's actually Christian. Is he? I want to. I'll, I'll look up. I want to see. There hasn't is. been much information, but from what I've heard from past interviews, he does appear to be. That would be crazy. Uh, dang. He mm-hmm. hasn't really ever publicly stated it. He's just hinted. 
That would be crazy if he was. Let me see. Uh, it doesn't say. Yeah, it, he kept. He keeps it like very private. But from what I've heard, signs point to he is. Oh, I, there's news saying that he's gonna make a Friday the Thirteenth remake. That I think he could do that super tastefully. Yup. Uh, t- Friday the Thirteenth is about to get very gory. Oh boy! Oh boy! I don't know. The thir- the 2013 remake was pretty pretty gory. If I have to say yeah, so myself. Uh, you have to think of the difference of Wes Craven and Damien Leone. Wait, Wes Craven did not make that movie. Wes, I don't think there was a Nightmare Wes Craven. Met Wes Craven. Wes Craven made the original Are Nightmare. Are talking Nightmare. Wes Craven's new Nightmare? No, I'm talking about Friday the Thirteenth. We're not talking. Where do we start talking about Nightmare on Elm Street? Friday the Thirteenth. All right. I'm, I'm oh my god. <laughs> uh, let me find the 2013 movie. I actually want to see who it is directed by. Um, the original 2013 is 2017. Well, the last one was. Um, the last one was made in 2007. What? Am I stupid? Oh, I'm thinking about the 2009. 2009. Yeah, it was directed was by nice Marcus Nispel. Um, that one wasn't as gory as. Think about Damien Leone versus that movie. Have you Damien seen the Lund. other one he released? Um, what's it called? Uh, well, I... I'm trying to think. What is the other one? We're getting off track here. We're getting off track here. No, no. This has something to do with Damien Leone. I'm trying to think of. Let me see all the movies. There's there. another movie he just released. Uh, He's not released. The only three movies he's released in the last uh, eight years is all the Terrifier movies. It should be. Hold up. You keep talking while I look this up. Keep talking okay. about the movie. I just left off where so, the mother started running. The mother started running. So the, I forgot exactly how she dies. I think she dies in the kitchen. Um, Art eats cookies. Uh, he does the dishes for the cookies, which is absolutely hilarious. And then he goes and he tries to find the little girl. He does. And she's in a cabinet. He does like this little like signature wave, but he doesn't kill her. At, as far as we know, we don't actually know if she died. But, like, it's implied that she does, but I'm not exactly sure about the implications and the actual, like, meaning of that scene. But anyway, um, and then we have the title card, uh, and then we pick up, I remember this part of the movie at least, uh, we're gonna do this not directly in order of the movie, we're gonna do it in the order that makes the most sense. And in the same order we did in the actual recording of this podcast, which was yesterday, I swear to God, Gavin, if our audio doesn't work this time... I'm going to be really pissed. Um, anyway, uh, so we pick up right after Terrifier 2, uh, Stream, where... Streaming, what? I was thinking of. Oh, you're talking about that movie. I don't think it was directed by him. It wasn't. Because it doesn't show up. He wasn't the director. Also, he's making the um, the Scream Boat Willy thing. Yeah. And was. he helped make the Winnie the Pooh movie. Was he involved in the Grinch horror movie? He was. He was. And he's also involved in the Winnie the Pooh one, I'm pretty sure, as well. That Pretty sure. Like, I don't think he was because I think the Winnie the Pooh one. Was no, it did. Are you talking about the Winnie the Pooh one or the Grinch one? The Winnie the Pooh. I don't. Maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, so it's right after Terrifier two. Uh, a cop finds Art's like headless body from when Sienna chopped his head off, uh, and Art kills him. The Waterfield Corporation. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, um. He finds Art's headless body, and uh, Art kills him. No, that's, we're not talking about that um, part yet. Oh, okay. We're talking about the cop. That's the security guard. Um, the cop finds Art's headless body, and Art takes his head off, and he puts it on his head, and he holds it on the metro, and he goes to um, – we cut to the mental hospital where Victoria is, and um, no, yeah, we have no, Chris no. Wilco. He quite literally strangles this dude and it's a headless body. We don't even know where his head yeah. is until yeah. a couple scenes no. later. Yeah, yeah, we don't know where his head is until a couple scenes later. Um, but he, how his head got there, but we'll we go cut, with it. We cut to the mental hospital and Chris Jericho is the um, security guard. Jericho, even though RJ probably doesn't even know who he is. I do, he's a WWE wrestler. Yeah, that's all you know about him. <laughs> he told me that. Um, anyway, um, 
So he, he's like the security guard. He hears a scream while he's getting some late night coffee. Uh, and he goes to investigate it and he finds Victoria with this like fleshy pipe thing. It's like really hard to explain. It's like a fleshy pipe. And it like goes like this. Um, and it's like going into head, like to Art's head where like his, it would attach to his body and he's like eating. It's really nasty. Now, was, um, now my question is here is who was screaming? Uh, it was probably Victoria or it was the guy Art was eating. It was a girl. It was a girl scream. And it was definitely Victoria. Um, probably to lure him in. Because remember, Victoria in this movie is possessed by the demon, so she can mimic voices. Because remember, she mimics Jonathan's voice. So it's hey, probably her. Hey, 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 we're already on the spoiler part. There's no need to, there's not a plot yeah, twist. Let's go, let's go. Into it's implied, the it's implied in the movie. That he'll be. Okay, all right, pal. All right, all right, all right. Anyway, uh, uh, so they kill that guy, um, kill a security guard. Uh, an arts like headless body shows up um, <clears throat> and they kill him and it's pretty nasty. I forgot like exactly how they kill him because I, I think they rip off his face and tear his face apart and stuff. Pretty sure Is that's like, the one where they take the his head and split it from here. I think it is. So then, yeah, then they go, they do that more than once in this movie. Um, they go into the metro and they see a guy dressed as Art, and he has a clown horn. And he's like, "Can I take a picture of you guys? You guys look so good." And I assume they kill him because he comes back with. Him get off the train. I said this in the last one too. I we no, saw him you didn't. Train. You didn't see him get off the train, but he because it just cuts straight to like Art's layer. And uh, anyway, uh, so we go to Art's layer after the train. Um, and for like Art Victoria is playing with the clown horn. So that's interesting. Um, and Art goes and sits in like a rocking I chair. And it's even before they say it's even what? possessing her. She it obviously shows signs of her being the demon girl because that's something that the demon girl did in this. Yeah. Movie. And another thing would that really showed me that it was her, it was the demon. Why I knew it wasn't Victoria is because Art ruined her life. So why would she want to work with him? You know what I'm Probably saying? Probably to make other people. I could see it being uh, making other people want to be like, uh, or making other people like her because she doesn't like being made fun of and stuff like that. I mean, we saw it. She killed someone by herself too in the second movie. Yeah, so that's but that's how we know she's possessed by the demon in in the third movie because she's like working with art. So uh, another, but another thing is actually in the post credit scene of Terrifier Two, she gives birth. And so, do you remember at the end of Terrifier 2, the pale girl takes Art's head away when Sienna cuts it off? And the crazy thing is, she disappears after that. But in the post credit scene, we see Victoria give birth to Art's head. So that's how we know she's possessed by the demon as well. We knew that since Terrifier 2. Um, anyway, so the, in the layer, Art goes sits in like a rocking chair. It's supposed to be a Black Christmas reference. You'll see it later. And then um, Victoria goes to the bathroom. Um, and she like, she hits her head against the mirror. She breaks it. Cause she's like ugly. She thinks she's ugly. And, um, she gets in the bathtub and she cuts her wrists. Um, and she like dies, but of course she's possessed by the demon. So she can't die. And then like five years later, um, these like demo guys come and they find, um, like they mess around. Like they're like, Oh, the place is hard. Explain the, uh, scene where he goes and finds her. I'll explain when he goes and finds her. Okay, so um, <clears throat> actually, I'd rather explain the art scene. No, I'm explaining art. Okay, make sure you reference the Black Grif Christmas reference. Um, anyway, uh, the um, uh, the guy, the guy who's like joking around about the place being haunted, goes to find Victoria. She's in the bathtub, and uh, like she's covered, like she's in a puddle, a pool of her own blood. It's really nasty looking. It's like all little like little bits in there of just nastiness and just really really gross honestly. Um, and he finds her and and he's like, oh, there's a dead body in here. And he calls his friend, you know. And but the other guy's finding art. So here you go. You can take over. Um. Yeah. The other dude goes and finds art. Uh, art actually quite literally looks like a doll in the scene. Uh. He um. 
He wants me to mention the Black Christmas thing. I don't really want to, but I guess I will. He is in the cobwebs and the chairs is someone we're trying to kill. The co- yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like this in Black Christmas. There's like an old lady that's in cobwebs that the someone finds, and that's supposed to be a Black Christmas reference. And he takes, uh, grabs his neck, and pins him to the, to the ground. Ground. Sorry, I heard the noise. I'm just trying. No. Oh. Um, pins him to the ground, and then he like uses hands for a while, but then eventually finds a nail. Oh, I forgot about this scene. He, oh yeah. He, I forgot what he does with the nail. I'm trying to. I think puts it in the back of his head. I think. No, I think he pins him to the ground, and then I think this is another one where he rips his head. Oh, yeah. He, like, tears his face apart and stuff again. Yeah, there's a lot of those kills. Uh, and then... Um, they do what, they kind of, what he kind of did to Alley and Terrifier 2 and pulls this off. Yeah, that's true. Do we want to mention the whole Victoria thing that happens in this scene? No. I don't think I want to either. Yeah. Just watch the movie. It's It's really gross, so watch the movie if you really want to know about it. Um, or maybe, you know, so, um, what's, what's next? I guess we could talk about Jonathan college. No, I think, I think we have to go. We, we have to mention when she gets picked up because this is when it comes. Oh, out. I'll mention, I'll talk about this part. So she gets picked up by her uncle. Um, and he's like, um, <clears throat> he's uh picks her up from this like wellness center it's not like the, it's not like an insane asylum like victoria was at it's just at like a like regular mental hospital so she's not like like in like a cell and trapped there she's just like there by choice it's like a um like a therapy place uh basically that you stay at it's not like a like a psych ward though necessarily um and she is basically like was there and her uncle takes her to um, his house where his aunt's also, but is also his cousin. Her name is Gabby. She's a pretty important character in the the whole like um, part of this movie. And it's of course Christmas time. So Jonathan um, is supposed to go to the house and Jonathan is in college. Um, and he has uh, a roommate, and uh, so something I mentioned in the uh, unreleased podcast episode that will never be seen because you can't hear me talking, uh, that there is a character, uh, well, I must mention that Leon knows how to make likable characters. Like, when they, like, you know, Gavin, like, every movie has, like, that character that you want them to die. Yeah, but Leon doesn't really have those characters in his movies. Like, I Ali was Ali was actually a good character though. The only reason that she died so gruesomely is because she called Art a mime, and he doesn't like being called a mime. So, uh, like, so Leon knows how to make likable characters, which I really like. So there's um the what's do you remember what the like roommate's name was? Not the girl, but the guy. Do you remember what his name was? Uh, the little girl. Mm mm. I'm not talking about Gabby. No, I'm talking about the um Jonathan's roommate, the guy. Uh, I don't think they ever said his name. Maybe I'm. No, they definitely it. did. But um, anyway, so he has a his girlfriend's name is Mia, not Jonathan's girlfriend, but the roommate. Well, and well, uh, we have we have to say this because I said this in the first episode. Maybe we need to watch out because this woman, it, it, this guy, yeah, podcast. he's a true crime broadcaster, and she wants jonathan she's like really pressuring jonathan and she's talking about how she's been following his story and everything she really wants him to go on the on her podcast but he's like mm, not really like really interested um the roommate is like kind of stuck like trying to push her doing that but like she doesn't really like that that he's doing that so uh she just keeps pressuring jonathan and he he's like like i don't really want to do that so you know you know he's just like dealing with you know, annoying people when he's dealing with trauma. So Sienna like calls him and they meet up. Um, no, are we? Yeah, we're at this part in the movie because they talk about the demon before the mall, right? 
No, 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 no. So let's not let's mention this. They went to the mall before. He... Yeah. So I know I'm talking about the second time the like the mall with art. But um, so that happens later. Um, but so uh, uh, what's her name? Sienna takes Gabby Christmas shopping for Jonathan and for everyone else, and she sees Art at dress as Santa. Oh, we didn't talk about Santa scene. We I we almost left that out. That would have been so bad. Uh, that would have been so bad. Oh uh, my back god! Back Let's go back like three scenes. Yeah, yeah. So I'll start. I'll start off with the first part, and you can you talk about the kill. With, you start off with the first part, then I'll, I'll yeah. explain the kill. Okay. So Art sees Santa through the window, and he's like runs there. He's like he's like a fan, and um the legend Clint Howard is sitting next to Santa, and he's like really jealous of him because acted Santa's also a pretty big actor, I think. He is, yeah. So um the like Santa has like all these girls around him, and then he's like he's like the out of the outfit has benefits, uh. And the guy sitting next to him, Clint Howard, is like really jealous of him. And the uh, you know, and Art comes in, and those while those girls are walking out, he pushes them out of the way. He doesn't kill them though, which is crazy. Those are like some of the first victims he's ever spared. Like he almost kills everyone that he sees. It's crazy. Um, he doesn't kill those guys. Um, those were girls. Oh, sorry, girls. Yeah. And he runs in. And he's like Santa. He's like, dude, that's you. That's you. But he like he's obviously not saying it because he can't speak. Uh, or at least maybe he can speak. He just chooses not to. He yeah, he could be, but maybe maybe he chooses not to speak. You yeah, know, sure never know. Mean, yeah, it makes I'm sense. Sure they've implied that more. Uh, <laughs> maybe. maybe. But he might be. But anyway, um, they like play around uh, for a while, and Art, um, like Santa buys him a drink. Uh, and art like spits in his face. It's definitely on purpose, so he can get him angry. Right, I'll but... pick up here. I'll pick up here. <laughs> so then he, they get mad, and Santa goes and tries to fight Clowny, <laughs> as he likes to call him. Yeah, Clowny. 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 Oh wait, Clowny. wait, wait. What did his fake ID say, RJ? What did Maurice his... Jackson. <laughs> close relative. Yeah, sure. Are you close relative? Sure, <laughs> sure buddy. Sure. Um. So basically, they get mad and it turns out into a fight. Art pulls out the Glock and just shoots the bartender and his uh, Santa's friend. Um, and Santa ends uh, ends up asleep when somehow. Oh, we gotta mention the we gotta mention the improvised line. Uh, he says, "We both make people happy," which I think is really is like that was apparently impro improv, like one hundred percent improv, which I thought was really cool. Um, so yeah. then it, uh, Santa wakes up in a chair tied down. Don't know how this happened, but, um, we got rid of that. Uh, and, uh, Art the Clown somehow found himself a fire extinguisher of liquid nitrogen. Don't well, know remember, they show him, they show him making it earlier. Yeah, remember I don't that? know where he found the liquid nitrogen to put in there, but we'll go with it. And who let him buy liquid nitrogen or steal it. Um... He sprays him with that from the, the on the body, but leaves his head uncovered. And uh, he hits his hand with a uh, hammer, both of his hands with hammers, and it a little nasty. And he hits his knees for it's his knees, right? He hits neck. Yeah. And then I think um, he sprays his face after that with liquid nitrogen and then he I think hits him once with the hammer and then he takes his beard yeah and he wears it yeah which I think this is right before he goes to the person's house in the beginning uh it's supposed to be right before he goes to the house in the beginning the yeah house. that's that's probably right we probably should do some form of like timeline thing at the mm -hmm. that would be kind of interesting. Um, save that for later. Um, then he leaves, and you can pick up because I I think we are at the mall. Maybe I think we're at the mall. No, I already talked about 
All right, so um, Jonathan goes to see, like, Sienna goes to see Jonathan. They have, like, lunch, and Mia shows up, and she's like, she's like, Sienna, 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 can you be on my podcast with Jonathan? And she's like, fuck no, fuck you, you dumb bitch. And she gets really mad, and she starts yapping about, you know, the whole demon thing to Jonathan. He's like, you're crazy, you're crazy. But he came up with the idea, so, like, kind of he's crazy if anyone's really crazy. Um, and... It's a really nice, it's a really nice scene. But she explains that this, like, she was like the chosen one to kill the demon, and the sword is the only thing I could do it. Um, and uh, Jonathan kind of believes her, and he goes back to his dorm, and you know, it's all fun in the games. But the probably like the most controversial, I think the opening scene is controversial, but the this scene, it might be more controversial. So this is like the infamous mall scene um, where Art. Uh, like there's this like Santa thing, you know, you see it every uh mall. And uh it goes on a break, the Santa, and um he he has like elf helpers and stuff, and he goes on a break, he's not there, and Art goes in and he takes over as Santa, and all the kids are like, Santa, Santa, Santa. So they go up and he starts giving out presents, and all these kids are crowding around, there's like probably like fifty kids roughly probably crowding all around art with their, all their toys and everything. And the security escorts him out because he's not, you know, the Santa that's supposed to be there and they don't want him there. And, but just before art gets like on like the escalator to get out, um, just before like the security can take him away from that area. He, one of the kids pulls out the wrong present from the sack and it's a bomb and it blows up all those kids and you see, like, the body parts of the kids. Like, I'm talking intestines, flesh, headless bodies, just parts. Of, it's really nasty, to be honest. It is quite nasty. And, oh, my God. It's insane. Um, so, you see that. And he, uh, well, we assume that he leaves, obviously, because, um you know, we don't see any other later scenes of the mall. But what we do see is Sienna seeing the news report on that and just freaking out. So she's like, she gets sleeping pills. She goes to sleep. But before that, his aunt, his uncle calls Jonathan and tells him that he's going to pick him up. This is where the shower scene comes into play. Um, I guess we had to mention that... Um, to do the shower scene. <sighs> Gotta keep it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh so I guess we can mention that Uncle when he goes to pick up the uh goes to pick up Jonathan. Uh the Victoria like mimics Jonathan's voice and she kills him. Uh you know, so that's great. But art goes into the roommate's room and with, with with Mia's in there as well and she basically tries to convince him to convince Jonathan um to go on the podcast and uh she uses the oldest trick in the horror movies the oldest trick of the book uh, a good old um SEX I'll just leave it that that uh anyway they like go in the shower. Oh, well, actually, we got to mention one really funny line. Uh, he's like, Why are you so obsessed with this clown? It sounds like you want to fuck him. And she's like, No. And Jonathan and, and Art sitting at the doorway where they can't see him. And he's like, Damn it. And I thought that was so funny. It was it was a great, great scene in the movie where, where Art's sitting in the back and he's doing this little comedy that he always does. He was very funny in this movie, I'll say. He does some funny things, but oh my God, these movies are gruesome. Um, anyway, they go in the shower, they're doing their thing. Art. Red is just, he's done taking a piss, uh, just taking a quick leak. You know, Art's got to go to the bathroom too, and uh, he pulls out his trusty old chainsaw, and he saws through the glass. He saws off the roommate's like fingers, and it's just real nasty. Like he rips off Mia's face. It is bad. This this movie. Um, I'm not gonna go into the whole details because I don't think that like I line striked, and. But let's just say at the end, Art, uh, there's a puddle of blood in a part of the room, and Art makes a snow angel. This was technically on YouTube. It was an early release clip for the movie, so I mean, I can say that at least. Um, anyway, that's the end of the shower scene. 
But the next scene is probably like the craziest scene in the whole movie. And I think the scene is absolutely absurd. Um, in this scene, um, Sienna wakes up to supposedly what's her aunt and uncle talking about uh, Sienna and how much of a burden she is. And they say, as she's coming down the stairs, uh, why don't we, we could just smother her and be rid of her burden pretty much is what like smother her in her sleep. And it's not actually her aunt uncle saying that it's Victoria mimicking, mimicking, mimicking voices and art grabs her and he knocks her out and he ties her up. Um, and who else is tied up is his or well, her aunt. And um, yeah, they're all like duct taped so they can't speak. And the crazy thing is Victoria is dressed as art because she's the demon who's possessing art to keep him alive, basically. <laughs> and um, it's – so before anything else happens um, – oh, I didn't mention this before, but uh, – because it's not really like a standout thing in the movie, but it is important later. Sienna puts a present for um, – well, like Gabby puts – I mean Sienna puts it there, but it's for herself technically. Um and it's like a long present that it has the sword in it, um, which we kind of knew because it was like kind of mentioned, to be honest. And um, so this part, uh, there's a there's a present in the middle of the room. It's like it's a cage, like a bird's cage. And inside it, there's a skull and a bunch of rats. And it's told by Victoria that it's Gabby. It's really not Gabby. We find out later, uh, just a few minutes after. But um this scene's really nasty. Um, Art kind of feeds the aunt rats, and it comes out her throat. It's pretty nasty. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that scene. She dies, uh, of course. Uh, it's very gruesome. Um, and then uh, Victoria brings out Gabby and is like, oh, well, she's not really dead. She's not really dead at all. And um, uh, she's Gabby says... I didn't get to open my present this year. And and Victoria said, oh, well, that's not fair. Uh, the um, oh, right, right. I can't get this wrong every time. The present was for Sienna. Um, and uh, Art gives, well, Victoria gives her the present. Um, and Art smashes her hands, like breaks them. It's pretty nasty. So like you can probably see the flesh right here, I think, in the movie. Um, and... Well, that's that I can say. That I can say because that you could see that in a PG thirteen movie, to be honest. Um, and we we like she opens the present, she struggles, um, but she finally gets it open. And and Gabby says, "I hope you like it." And and Sienna says, "It's the best present ever." And she stabs Art, and he falls to the ground, and like he's he's like clearly in pain. He stand he's sta he's down for a couple minutes. She goes over to Victoria. And she, what does she like? Stab her in the stomach and then cut her head off. I think. Mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah, something like that. And you know, Art's not very happy about that, so he kind of attacks her. Um, I can't exactly remember what happens next. You want to go from here? Uh, Art gets back up and tries to attack again, but uh, gets basically easiest way stabbed in the stomach and pinned through the wall. Oh, no, 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 Remember, there was the whole, like, five-minute battle with the chainsaw where the portal of hell opens up from, like, this weird acid -y stuff out of Victoria. And Gabby and Gabby falls in, and she's still battling Art. She pins him to the wall. Then she pins him to the wall. And she has to make the choice of killing Art or saving Gabby. And she chooses saving Gabby, interestingly enough. And she fails to save Gabby. She falls into what we assume is the pit of hell because it's a demon. Um that died so i don't know maybe it's probably it's probably what it is um and sienna tries to go save her and fails um pretty miserably and she turns around to see art is gone and the next time we see our best friend art the clown he or maybe not some people's best friend art the clown um, <laughs> uh he is sitting at the bus station uh waiting for a bus and then we get a little nod to uh, Thornton's first, really kind of first film, um, The Ninth Circle or All Hallows Eve. Really yeah. All Hallows Eve is the first film he was in. Um, 
it, where first off the woman on the bus is reading the ninth circle. That's yeah. So it's, it's supposed to be. Whole you say. scene itself is kind of a nod to a scene in the ninth circle where it's a woman at a train station with the original from the first time we ever saw her sitting across from her. And that movie uses like a supernatural, like ghost, like kind of thing. But the so did you know like where so Leon got the idea of art from like on a bus with a woman reading making her uncomfortable. Then like slowly he gets more aggressive and eventually he kills her. That's actually where he got the idea of Terrifier. So it it's supposed to be essentially a reincarnation of where he got like the idea of art from, which I think is a really cool way to end off the third movie. Um, there is no post credit scene. That's really it. We don't see him kill the woman. We don't see him kill the bus driver. That's it. I mean, all right. Well, I don't think we have okay. more to talk about. I mean, I guess we can talk about the future of the franchise. So I guess well, in the next movie, confirm Terrifier for impossible. More. I know, but like, what do we have predictions for the plot? I think uh, Art yeah, is definitely still alive. And I really think it's too early to tell. I think we maybe. Why not? But like we can we can take some key like clues. I think Sienna is gonna have like a Laurie Strode situation where she's gonna be a little bit older and um she's gonna be like mega 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 paranoid and she's gonna have like a bunch of guns, a whole like a whole thing like in Halloween twenty eighteen is what I kind of think the next movie is gonna be like. Soon. They would have to wait forever to film something if they want to make it look like she's older. Well, no, what I mean, what I mean is she's like. She, the actual actor, how old is she? She's got to be like in her 20s, right? She was in her 20s when she was created Okay, uh, what's her name? Laura Le... What's her name again? Lauren Lovera. Okay. Lauren Lovera. Because, like, how old is she? Uh, she is 30 years old. She's 30 years old? Okay, they could definitely they could definitely do something with her age in the next movie. I, I think, think they're projecting two years for Terrifier Four. I think they could like use makeup to make her look slightly older, they're but I'm not talking about like old lady. I think they the plot is supposed to fall right after Terrifier Three ends. I mean, like I like those kind of movies because Terrifier Three, it felt a little bit like um like a Halloween movie because it has that same like it, because you know how Friday the Thirteenth it doesn't have do one consistent like halloween 2018 it's gonna pick up sometime right close to right after what i mean by that is um it'll fall close to right after terrifier 3 what i mean by that though i'm not i don't mean like it's gonna be like a long time I've, i'm saying no, like i don't think they'll go to the paranoid mode i think they'll go to the she's going to go and hunt down or more than hide and wait for him to come to her I mean, like, Laurie Stroke kind of did both but it's, uh, because she wanted to go kill him. But it's a little too, uh, you know? too early to confirm nor deny anything yet until we have any information on Terrifier 4, so... Wait, I gotta, I gotta say something. So, I feel like it's this franchise relates a lot more closely to Scream and to Halloween because, you know, Friday the 13th never has one consistent character in the end. Like, there's... An, I can't think of one Friday the 13th movie where there's been, like, this character has... There's one... There's actually like three movies I can think of where there's one character that's been in three movies that was um uh what's his name? I can't remember. Um but he was in three movies. Um part three, part four, and part no no, sorry, part three, no, sorry, part four, part five, and part six. And he was in all three of those movies. But the thing is, I feel like this uh there's no other examples where that tracks in Friday the thirteenth. So but with Scream, um you know, the character from the first movie was kind of in a few more movies. So I feel like, but it, it more closely relates to Halloween because uh, Laurie Strode has been in so many of the movies and she's got such a big rivalry with Michael. So it's, but it's kind of the same thing with Sienna and Art, I feel like, is what's going to carry on with this movie. I feel like there hasn't been enough terrifiers to say anything about that yet. Oh. Well, no, but she's been in two, you know. I feel like she'll die at some point, but it'll be like Terrifier 5 when she dies, if I had to say. All right. I say we end it there before we start talking. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Let's call it a uh, episode. We'll see you in the next one. See ya.